Hi, Yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome to my crochet channel. Now, today's video is our third spring pot holder in our three part series. The first one was the spring lamb, then we did the spring chick, and today we're going to do the spring bunny. It's a super cute little pattern. All of them measure eight and a half inches across. And what I'm going to do is I will put the link for the chick and the lamb as well as the bunny down in the notes underneath this video. That way you can make all three of them if you want to. Another thing I'm going to show you today is how to make two of them and put them together if you want a thicker hot pad. And also, you can make this into a little stuffy if you want to, a little pillow, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So that gives you lots of options to use these little hot pads or pot holders. So we're going to be making the spring bunny today. And again, all three of those pattern links will be down in the notes underneath this video. All right, let's talk yarn for just a second. If you're going to be using this as an actual hot pad, which means you're going to put something hot from the oven or off the stove on it, make sure that you do make it out of cotton because acrylic melts and it can ruin the surface as well as your hands get, getting burnt. And so you want to use cotton if you're going to use it as an actual hot pad. Now I like to use mine on the table, maybe put a basket of rolls on it or put the butter dish across it. If you're gonna do that, then acrylic is totally fine, all right? Now you'll notice I've got a bunch of different colors because this bunny here was our test bunny and I made it in just the two colors except for the pretty flowers. But I'm going to bring it up a notch. I got in my yarn stash and pulled out some bright colors. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this beige for where I have the pink here, the paws, and the ears. But all the details, they're going to be all these bright colors. All right. So, and just a reminder, whether you're using cotton, acrylic, or another yarn, you're going to need medium weight number four yarns. You're going to need about an ounce for all the pink areas and then a half ounce of all the other colors, a small amount for the flowers. All right. I think it would be super cute to make these all in white and make them look like daisies or maybe do them all in bright orange or bright yellow with a brown center, make them look like sunflowers. So there's lots of options with this type of pattern. All right, now remember, if you're going to make two of them, you're gonna need twice as much yarn. I'll show you how to put them together and make it into a super thick hot pad as well as a stuffy. You're just gonna need about a handful of polyester fiber fill. You don't want very much because if you push it out too much, it won't look really pretty if you're making it into a little pillow or stuffy. We're gonna be stitching today with our H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. And then of course you're gonna need a needle for sewing on your bits and pieces and flowers and embroidering on your cute bunny face. And also to weave in those pesky ends. I'm starting with my light brown or beige yarn. I'm going to begin with my slip knot and chain five. We're going to join this chain five into a circle. So we'll put the tail of our yarn over our hook and pull that through. Then we'll just snug that down and make that stay knot. Now, if you would prefer to use the magic circle or another method for your circle here, that's totally fine. We're going to go in, pull up a loop and chain three. And we're going to stitch nine more double crochets. So we'll have a total of 10 because our chain three counts as our first. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over and go through the second two loops. That's our double crochet. All 
variety. Let me see how many I've got stitched here. Here's our chain three that counts as our first. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one more makes ten. So we have our chain three and nine double crochets. We're going to join to our chain three with a slip stitch and we'll go ahead and chain three. Now I'm going to go ahead and weave this end in, so I'll turn it over. I'll gently pull on that string. We'll thread that onto our needle and we'll go ahead and weave it in. Now, you don't have to do this right now. I like to just go ahead and take care of it. You can do it at the end of your project if you want to. There we go. Alrighty. So we want that hole in the center of our hot pad or pot holder or whatever we're making it into, pillow, <laughs> to be closed. So just go around, make sure it's snug down, and then just go back the way we came. Alrighty. Nice and snug and my hole is closed. Alright, so for row one we had ten double crochets. We joined to our chain three and chained three. So for row two, our chain three counts as our first double crochet. We're going to double crochet in that same stitch as our chain three. And now we're going to go to our next double crochet and stitch two double crochets. And so what we're going to do for row two is stitch two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. And since we have 10 on row one, on row two, we're going to have 20 double crochets. So two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. And then we'll join back to our chain three. So on row two, we stitch two double crochets in each of those 10, so we have 20 double crochets. We're going to join to our chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. And for row three, we're basically doing the same thing we did in row two. We're going to double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. And then we're going to stitch two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. Just like we did on row two. Row two had 20 double crochets and since we're stitching two in each one, row three will have 40 double crochets. So two double crochets in each of those double crochets all the way around. And then we'll join back to our chain three. So I completed row three, stitching two double crochets in each of those 20, so I have 40 double crochets. We joined to our chain three and chained three. Now for row four, we're not going to stitch in the same stitch as our chain three. We're going to stitch a double crochet in the next two stitches, one and two. And then we're going to stitch two double crochets in the next double crochet. So we have our chain three and two double crochets, so that's three double crochets and then two in the next. And so what our repeat is for row four is one double crochet in the next three stitches, one, two, three, and then two double crochets in the next, one and two. One double crochet in the next three, one, two, three, and then two double crochets in the next double crochet, one and two. And this is our repeat for row four. One double crochet in the next three, and two double crochets in the next double crochet. And we'll repeat this all the way around and join back to our chain three. I completed row four, stitching one double crochet in the next three and two in the next, all the way around, 
and I join back to my chain three. But I'm not going to chain three because we're going to change colors. So I'm going to clip my yarn and I'm going to bring in the color that I want to use for my color two. And remember, you can use whatever colors that you like. So I'm going to bring in this pretty orchid that I have left from a previous project. And then I'm going to chain three. And it's always a good idea to do your chain three after your color change because it counts as our first stitch. And you don't want that first stitch to be the beige or you'll have one stitch that's the wrong color. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next three stitches. So our chain three counted as one and we stitched three. So we have four double crochets. Now we're going to stitch two double crochets in the same stitch, one and two. And so our repeat for row five is one double crochet in the next four, one, two, three, four, and then two double crochets in the next stitch, one and two. And we'll repeat this all the way around and join back to our chain three. Two, three, four, and two double crochets in the next. And we'll repeat this working all the way around and join back to our chain three. I have completed row five. We stitched one double crochet in the next four, two in the next, and repeated that all the way around. We joined to our chain three, and now I'm going to chain three. And we have one more row of double crochets. And so we're going to double crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And so with our chain three, that's five double crochets. And then we'll stitch two double crochets in the next. And so that is our repeat for row six. One double crochet in the next five. One, two, three, four, and five. And two double crochets in the next. One and two. And then we'll continue to repeat that all the way around again and then join back to our chain three. I completed row six. I joined my chain three with a slip stitch, but I didn't chain three. Now, if you're going to make it a double thick hot pad, this is where you're gonna to need to have two of them. Also, if you're going to make it a stuffy, this is where you'll need to have two of them, all right? And so you'll have two, you'll put the backs together, and one of them you'll tie off like I did here. And the other one, of course, we're going to cut that as well because we're going to change colors. And we're going to bring in this bright pink. Now, whether you're doing one layer or two, this last row is done the same. The only difference is, if you're doing two, you're going to need to go through two layers of your hot pads, okay? So let me go ahead and bring in the color I'm using for the trim, which is this bright pink. We'll put these together, and we're going to go in that first stitch, and we'll go in the first stitch on this side and stitch a single crochet. And if you're only doing one, you won't go through two, you'll just go through one. 
if you're putting the two together, you'll go through both the front and the back. And remember, your right sides are facing out. All right, so we're going to stitch one single crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. So we did one and then we did five more. So there's six single crochets. Then in the next stitch, we're going to stitch two single crochets, one and two. One single crochet in the next six stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then two single crochets in the next, one and two. And we'll repeat this all the way around the outside of our hot pad, whether we're stitching two together or just stitching one. This trim is exactly the same. Six single crochets and then two together. Repeat all the way around and then we'll join back to our first single crochet. I've stitched almost all the way around and that's because if you're going to make this into a stuffy, this is where you want to add that stuffing. I've got some polyester fiber fill and we'll just go ahead and stuff it and then after we make all the parts, we'll just add those on. All right, so I went ahead and just stuffed it. Now it's a little stuffy. And then I'll finish going around and stitching my single crochet stitches. And so whether you made this a single layer of a hot pad, a double layer of a hot pad, or a stuffy, you're going to join back to your first single crochet with a slip stitch, clip your yarn, you want to pull that through to the back so the front has a nice appearance and then we'll weave that in. All right, so all three of these spring hot pads that we have made can be a single hot pad, it can be a double hot pad, and it can be a cute little stuffy or pillow. We're going to make the ears and the ears are made in a long oval and then we cinch the middle in. So I'm using my beige since that's the color of my bunny's face. And we're going to chain 19 chains. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, and 19 chains. In the second chain from the hook, we're going to stitch two single crochets. One and two. And now we're going to stitch one single crochet across until we reach that last stitch. In that last stitch, we're going to stitch two single crochets. So one single crochet in each of the chains across. Couple more stitches. And then when we reach this last chain, we're going to stitch two single crochets, one and two. Now we're going to turn our work and we're going to stitch down what's called the other or opposite side of the chain. We're going to stitch two single crochets in that first chain, one, two. Then we'll stitch one single crochet in each of those chains or stitches, working all the way back down. 
and then we'll stitch two single crochets in that last stitch. And this makes a nice long oval to make our ears. And then when we get to that last stitch, we're going to stitch two single crochets in that last stitch. And then we'll join to that first single crochet. See how that makes like a nice long oval? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to stitch, we forgot to chain one, and now we're going to stitch one single crochet in each of those single crochets going all the way around that oval. One single crochet in each of those stitches going all the way around and join back to our first single crochet. I single crocheted all the way around. I'm back around where we started and I'm going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch and I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn. And so now we're going to join in our color two and of course you can choose whatever colors you prefer. Chain one and now we're going to slip stitch in each of those single crochets. Go in, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop on your hook. This gives us a nice pop of color without making it any bigger. And I like how it looks. It just adds a little extra pop of fun and color. And so we're going to slip stitch in each of the single crochets all the way around our ears. I slip stitched all the way around and again I think it just makes a lovely pop of color. When you get to the end, whoops, go behind that stitch and pull that loop to the back. There we go. And we'll cut that yarn. And we do have a little bit of weaving in to do. There we go. One thing that happens sometimes is you'll get a hole here and a hole here. And so we'll take those ends of our yarn and make sure those are closed up and it looks nice and tidy. And what I do, this one's not as big, but I just kind of go around and make sure that's closed up and then weave that in. And then we'll do that on this other end as well. And then I'll tidy up those purple ends and I'll show you how to cinch it up and put it onto, whoops, <laughs> and put it onto our hot pad or a pillow. There we go. So here is my bunny ears all tidied up and we're going to take a piece of yarn that matches our main color and we're just going to wrap it around the center and I usually turn it over, tie a knot and you can see how it looks from the front and I'll wrap it a few times this way, wrap it a few times this way and then just tie that knot again. So we want that to stay cinched in. By cinching that in, that makes two bunny ears. All right, and so then we'll just take this, and I like to center where we have our chains here because this is going to help hide some of that. So we'll just take these, thread them onto our needle, and we'll just make a couple, let's see, we want to go up and down here, make a couple of stitches. And I'll go around those, whoops, we don't want it that way. <laughs> I'll go around those bunny ears and come back up. And then I'll take the other one. Oops. 
There we go. Do the same thing. We want to stay secure because I have a feeling this is going to get played with. We want those bunny ears to stay secure. All right. So then I'll pull on that. There we go. Tie a couple of nice knots because we want that to stay put on our bunny. All right. Isn't that so cute? <laughs> I'll just take my hook and go through from the back and pull those strings to the back. Whether it's a pillow or a hot pad, you want to pull those to the back. And then if you're doing this on a stuffy, I suggest that you pull it and tie another knot. And that's going to help it even more because it's going to get caught in that stuffing. Okay, so now our bunny has super duper cute bunny ears. Now we're going to need to make two paws. We'll start with a slip stitch and chain two. Six single crochets in the second chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. Move that tail of yarn out of the way five and six will join to that first single crochet chain one and then two single crochets in each of those six so one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, and 12. We'll join to that first single crochet with the slip stitch and we'll tie off and leave yourself a good amount of yarn, 10 inches or 12, so we can sew that onto our bunny. All right, so I'm going to go behind and pull that loop to the back. All right, now there's a couple things we need to do first, and the first thing is sew up that hole in the center of our paw. All right, so we're just going to go around that edge of the first row of single crochets and make sure that hole is closed up. We don't want a hole in the center of our paw. All righty, cut that off. Now we need to make those little lines. I've already got one on here so you can see it, but those are the paw lines. So we'll grab a piece of this white. Thread that on our needle. Turn it over to the front. And make sure when you do this, you come up through a single crochet stitch. You don't want to lose this in the hole between. All right, so I'm going to go right in that single crochet down there. And then we'll come across and do the same thing over here. And don't pull too tight because you don't want it to come out and you don't want it to pucker up your paw. All right, and we'll turn that over. Make sure that's secured and not showing through on the front. You don't want where you weaved it in to show through. And then we'll go ahead and clip that. All right, so now we're just gonna thread this tail of yarn onto our needle. There we go. And we'll put it next to this one because the two little paws are right down centered on the front. And this is whether you're doing a hot pad or a stuffy, this part is again done the same. We'll put them right up next to each other. Just make sure on the stuffy you don't go all the way through to the back. That's the only thing. Just going through the first layer. And we're just going to go around this edge, sewing that paw securely on. Because all your pieces are need to be securely sewed on, because when you make something as cute as this, it's probably going to get played with, <laughs> especially the pillow. And so we'll just go around those edges, making sure it's securely sewed on. 
think I missed it right there. Let's go back in there. There we go. And this portion here is one of those places where that curd needle does make a difference. Because you can get in there and sew it on rather easily. And I just keep going around until I run out of yarn. So if I came unthreaded there, put it back on there. Alrighty, so it's on there nice and secure. And of course, we'll just weave that to the back. There's my two little paws. Whoops. I don't want that to show through. Now on the stuffy, I'm going to go in and go around some of that stuffing, come up and tie a knot. On the hot pads, we're just going to weave that into the back. There we go. And so now our bunny has two little paws and its ears. All right, before we do our flowers, I want to go ahead and sew on the face because it's really a simple little face. So I've threaded the white yarn onto my needle and we're going to start here in the center and we're going to come up in that center. And this is also very important that you stitch through stitches and not through holes. Okay, because you don't want to lose your work in the holes. All right, so I'm going to stitch that twice. Then I'm going to come over here to this stitch and just make a line across. All right, and then the placement of the eyes is kind of up to you. We're just going to make a couple of V stitches. I should say V-shaped stitches. You want to kind of make it even if you can. There we go. I'm running out of yarn, so I'm going to go ahead and Weave that into the back, and then I'll make that other eye exactly the same way that I did that one. So the bunny has its little paws, it has its little ears, and it has its little face. The only thing left is to add those beautiful and fun spring flowers. I have two flowers made, and I'm going to make one more in this orange. And you need to make three or more. We'll start with our slip knot. We'll chain two. And then six single crochets in the chain two. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we'll join to our first single crochet and chain seven. We'll slip stitch in the next single crochet and chain seven. And then we'll repeat this four more times so we have six petals. I've repeated that six times. Here's my last chain seven, and I'm going to slip stitch in that first single crochet, and then we're going to tie off, but we're going to leave a long tail of yarn so that we can sew that onto the top of our bunny. And before we do that, we need to close up that circle in the center. So we'll just take our needle and thread that onto our needle. There we go and we'll close up this hole in the center. All right, we'll clip that. 
And now we'll add our three flowers to our bunny. So you'll thread that long tail of yarn onto your needle, and then we'll go right to the center of that so that our thread or our yarn is in the center. And I'm gonna put this one on. And we'll go up underneath. And then we'll just only stitch around the center of that flower like this, going in and out, because we don't want the petals to be sewn down. All right, just like that. And then we'll weave this in. and cut that yarn and then we'll repeat that with these next two flowers right up here at the top of our bunny's head so here is our spring bunny we took our pot holder or hot pad made two of them put them together and made it into a really cute stuffy now when you make the stuffy i don't add the hanger but after you do your last row here of single crochet, you can make a hanger just by chaining 12 and attaching it to the top of the bunny there so that it can be hung up. Now, if you want to hang this up, you can add that hanger as well. I don't add it when I make it into a stuffy. And remember, the spring chick and the spring lamb can be made double thick, just like this one, and made into a stuffy just like this one make two put it together with that last row same thing on here your shell row make two of them put it together it's double thick for a nice thick hot pad or stuff it for a fun spring stuffy